Right, so we've got to the stage where I've done all the trackers for the swell. There is some touch on all the keys. As you know, we set the first 25, 26 notes as to as many of those red felts as we've got fitted on the centre pins of the keyboard. Still waiting for the rest to come, so the touch isn't set any further. It's pointless going to all that trouble. Uh, there is a key drop to middle F. I think the bushings come out of the rollerboard. One of the problems is, is you put the, the trackers in, the wires can poke out the, wire, the, uh, the bushings. I've even lost two new bushings, let alone some of the older ones. So, um, you know, once it's in, they'll, everything will stay put, but just in assembly, you, you can clunk some bits out. So we've got another bushing to do. It doesn't have to be done today. It doesn't have to be done next week. What we're going to do now, um, in view of um, not having those red felts is we're going to get on with the great soundboard uh, when the red felts arrive we'll spend a couple of hours doing that and, and setting the touch on as well and I might start looking into um, some of the tightness on some of the notes uh, sometimes the wires are a little bit too tight through the bushings it's just a matter of, uh, of working them through so as you saw on the last video there's one or two notes sticking i have addressed one of them there's probably a couple left perhaps some strength springs will need strengthening um i don't know we'll, we'll find out but there's there's no grass growing around it it doesn't matter but we need to get on with the grate uh, and the other thing we're going to do i'm just going to pop the final screws in the back of the swell box we'll get the organ moved up against the wall but as a rider to that i need to dig out the casework bottom to make sure that I'm not going to put that organ back to the wall, start fitting all the, the bits that go around where, so I can't then move it, only to discover that the case won't go on because I've, I've made a, an error. So we're going to dig a couple of... Um, in fact, I think they're actually lying there in that corner. They are the two sides of the bottom of the casework. Um, so they, you see the, just, you see the top of that I've just moved there. Those two pieces there, which are about um, 15 inches wide, uh, go around the two sides of the organ. And they tuck around the back, so I've got to just see how far they do tuck around the back. So something to look at. We'll paint the bottom, I think we're going to paint the bottom brown. It, it's currently, uh, the whole case was, lower case was done in that awful um, uh, wood grain um, paint, which was popular in the 1920s. Uh, and then if you remember, the, the top section was white. Well, the whole organ is supposed to be olive green, greeny yellow. I don't know what it's going to look like, but that's the colour it was manufactured and that's the colour it's going to be. So in front, we've now got on the work table, we've got the great soundboard as one or two remains of trackers poking out. And something which, um, if I just lock this camera into position, that'd be clever because this tripod's rubbish. This um, tripod came from my late uncle's estate and um, and he's the person who left the funds to build this building this as a private chapel uh, with the instruction it had to have a pipe organ installed and that anyone who wants to learn may do so for free. So that's one of the things I have to pay for the organ. Um, because he said I'm an organ builder and he's, I'm always free to sell it and put a different one in. So. What is unusual about this soundboard? I've not seen this before, but then I've only seen 200 organs. And that is, we've got a concussion bellows built into the soundboard. Now, I'm not going to re-leather this, but I'm going, to, I'm going to put some strips of leather because there is some wear on the sides. Now, if this organ was for a customer, we would give them the option to re-leather this uh, concussion bellows. But I would say, there's nothing wrong with the, uh, the gussets and the only cracking I can see is actually where it goes onto the, the bottom of the soundboard. So I think we'll just go around with some strips of leather and that should uh, sort it for the next 25 years. But I'd say if it was a customer, they would be given the option. There's some damage there from us taking out, I think it's got clogged in transit. We've got the remains of some trackers here, which we'll remove a number because they're actually still in one piece, uh, surprise, surprise. There isn't as much rodent damage as on the other one. I'll just move the camera. It's one of the problems, especially living in the country, diff keeping mice out of any storage facility, whether it's brick or timber. 
I've made sure we've not had any doors open in here, but Mr. Chippy says I just don't hope. I just he just hopes that no parts have come in with a mouse built into them, like this, for example. You know, I could have brought this in yesterday, and what happens if there's a mouse inside which isn't now inside and it's in the building? You know, so we have to be aware of that. So. The calico on the bottom, if you remember where we were doing the swell one, it was all eaten away. And you can see right at the end, there's two, and they are indeed eaten away. Those two at the end there. So potentially, the, this has had uh, rodent damage, but only on the bottom two notes. But when I look at this, the, one of the things about the calico on the bars, these have got holes in, and that's got substantial holes in, and that's to bleed air that is leaking past the pallets. So you, you've heard when I've had our swell on, there's one or two notes whimpering. And so you will make sure that there's no dirt on the pallets, you'll make sure the action isn't tight. But if that still continues, there is a leak and you can't be stripping it down and repalleting it again. We, it can happen that there's going to be the odd note. And that's where you'll put a bleed hole with a pointer into the calico. Neatly. <laughs> These are blooming great big holes and it tells me that there's trouble with quite a number of the pallets. So you know what? We're going to end up repalleting this just like we did the, uh, the swell, uh, regardless of cost, it's got to be done. So this was clearly problematic um, even when it was overhauled in 1984. So what I'm going to do, I'll just clean some of the um, the spider's webs and things off and, and the clean and clean it up, and uh, we'll get it stripped down. I'm not I'm not going to have to strip this off. I'll just recover the whole thing. I think uh, maybe the best course of action. Depends what it what is it is it leather is it cardboard. You know, it's cardboard, isn't it, on this old one? Yeah, it's cardboard. Anyway, calico is the correct thing. This is nailed on. Um, nothing should be nailed on organs, everything should be screwed. So whatever that's for, which is gonna be something to do with the casework, um, probably went on in 1919 when the organ got moved. And we will take that off and we'll clean that up, put a bit of polish on it, because there shouldn't be bare bits of wood like that, and um, we'll screw it back on, because no doubt it is necessary, it would be found to be necessary when it got moved. So that's the next thing, we'll get this taken apart and then we'll get the camera back on. So with the soundboard open, we've got the he gone. Anyway, whoever it is, Hull, July the 19th, 1865. I'll have to compare as to what the date was on the great soundboard. Because we certainly had one if I just done my way through the photos. I'll take a still off this and print that as well. Looks like August 1865 on the other one. I'm just making up some fresh glue. I had another organ builder friend around yesterday and he's the person, um, Chris from Lincoln, who put me on to buying this organ in 2010. Right, we'll just move the camera back round. So with the bottom off, we actually can't see any rodent damage on those final two notes on the right, not to the pallets anyway which is the only place any rodents could have been in, and they haven't been inside here. I've just vacuumed that out and there were no droppings, uh, which is amazing how much damage there was to the swell soundboard, but not to this. So uh, we're gonna just leave it, put new pull downs on, and um, I'll make sure that the steady pins are lubricated. I'll go through that with you again. And um, we're gonna put some glue on the back and I'll show you that more in more detail right now. So where these are glued onto the back, and I think it's cardboard um, on the back, and if you remember I did that, I'm sure newer cardboard's better than 1865 cardboard, and you've got the tails of the pallets glued onto that, and then you've got these 
which are nailed down the uh, heel guards and we we took the screws out we took the nails out of the swell ones we put screws in i don't like to see nails in pipe organs at all but we're going to leave this as it is there's no point taking those out um and we're just going what we're going to do is to put plenty of uh, hot animal glue on the back there just in case it's a bit of a belt and braces i've no reason to expect there's any leaks whatsoever i'm just going to make sure it's vacuumed at the back once again and then the other thing we'll do i'll just move the camera as i said to before those two end ones have got rodent damage they've eaten away the it, it's kind of um cardboard with uh, cloth on it it's not tosh i don't know what it is anyway um we're going to be putting calico over the whole thing I'm going to make sure those two are vacuumed out, um, but th there won't be any debris uh, normal, more than you'd get normally uh, on the rest of the bars. So we, the other thing we were concerned about is there's clearly been problems because they've had to puncture the uh, calico, we call it, to, to bleed. And um, it may just be that the pallets have um, had a little bit of dirt on them we're going to be cleaning those with the pallet brush so i'm not going to be expecting it to uh, to be ha having to be re-punctured again when i've redone it so we're not going to re-pallet this one and um, i think we'll leave it at that i don't know whether they're the original 1865 ones but uh, they look okay and um, chris inspected it as well so it saves a couple of uh, it saves <laughs> like couple of hundred quid and uh, and 20 hours work but I'm not doing that to skimp on the work um, I expected we'd have to repallet it when I'd seen the first one but initially when we bought the organ with it being in a playable condition I didn't expect to have to do them at all so there we are so uh, I had to do it for the swell we're not going to do it for the grate when we get to the pedal it will be a different kettle of fish because it's pneumatic oh dear so you can see that I've put new calico on the back it's all done with animal glue. No, there isn't. There's a shadow of that at the end. So, if anything does need um, a little hole in it for any pressure relief, well, we can do that later. We haven't had to do it on the swell yet. Um, so, what we've done here at the back is to run over it with a generous amount of the hot animal glue, and that's a bit of a belt and braces because there's no reason to suspect there's any fault anyway but we're just making sure we're covering uh, our tracks. And then I've cleaned the pallets, I've shown you how that's been, how that's done uh, before. I'll just move the camera and I'll just show on one. So we have a pallet brush, which is a stick with a piece of sandpaper on it, which is now a dirty piece of sandpaper. Because obviously there's a lot of years of dirt on the pallets. But it's not that I'm cleaning off. I'm not so bothered about that. So the idea is that we we have the because he's upside down. So what we have is the leather here. So I can go down there and I can feel it if there's any grit, and it just pulls it to the edge, and then we can remove that. So we, actually, there's a little spot just there which I've. Not done. Uh, this bounce, this will all be done again when it's in position, because what will happen is there will be debris in it, and it will um, it, it will come out into the palace, and this is what happens. You end up with sticking notes and whimpering notes. What I'm going to do now, in view of this being in storage and the age, etc., I'm actually going to tip it up onto its side. Now I'm on my own; it weighs 600 weight, so we'll give it a go.